As many of you will know, I have been using the Fractal Audio Axe Effects 2 for pretty much all of my YouTube videos since I started taking this seriously. And it's a great piece of gear. I love it. In the time that I've owned this thing for, which is about four or five years now, I haven't really bought many pedals. And to be honest, even before I had this thing, I didn't have a real pedal board setup. But in recent months, I really started to, to want a pedal board. One, because pedals are just cool and fun to mess around with. And two, I miss the hands-on aspect of stomp box pedals, which is something you don't really get with a unit like the Axe. As well as this, I wanted to have something portable that I could bring to a rehearsal space where there would be backline amps waiting for me to use. So in the past, if I wanted to take effects with me to a rehearsal, I would have to take the Axe FX2 in one hand and then the MFC 101 controller in the other. And that was a bit of a pain, especially when walking through crowds or getting on public transport. So what did I do? I bought a bunch of pedals, a good power supply, a pedal train, a couple of pedal board cable kits from Didario, and this is the end result. Let's take a closer look at this board. I'm gonna start by talking about the layout of the board and the placement of the pedals, which might save you some frustration when building a board of your own if you're currently doing that or thinking about doing that. After that, I'll plug some guitars in and walk you through some of the sounds that this board is capable of. So starting with the power supply, I've got a Voodoo Labs pedal power two plus, I had to write down the name of that there. It is powering eight out of the nine pedals on this board. So the only pedal that doesn't need power on this board is the Ernie Ball volume pedal, but we'll get to that in a minute. As you can see, the power supply is mounted securely to the board using the pedal train mounting kit that they sell specifically for power supplies like this one here. And it's very easy to install. You just need a power drill, drill a few holes in the actual board itself, and then screw the power supply in place. Real quick, before I go over the layout of the board, the pedals used on this board include the Ernie Ball Volume Pedal Junior, which is passive, the Boss TU3 Chromatic Tuner, classic, the Boss MD500 Modulation, the JHS Bonsai, which is a multi-circuit tube screamer pedal, the Dunlop Crybaby Mini, Walrus Audio ARP87 Delay, Fender, the Benz Compressor, Strymon Blue Sky Reverb, and the Sur Eclipse Dual Overdrive Distortion. Now let's talk about the layout of the board. I want to talk about the actual placement of each pedal because it might save you some frustration when putting together a board of your own. So as you can see, there is some empty space on this board. It's just a bit bigger than it actually needs to be and that is deliberate. And before I forget, this is a Pedal Train Novo 18. So that's the size of Pedal Train that I'm using. Now, really tight and compact pedal boards that fit as many pedals as possible onto the board, they look cool in photos that you see on Instagram, you know, gear pages and all that sort of stuff. But in reality, they can be an actual nightmare for accidentally turning pedals on and off, pedals that you don't want to be turning on and off. Because when you cram loads of pedals onto a tight space, you're gonna encounter the problem of having at least two foot switches that are dangerously close together. And I have to credit my friend Rhett Shull for bringing this to my attention because he made a video about his pedal board and why he hated the initial layout of it because he was constantly turning on and off pedals that he didn't want to be touching when he was performing, which is of course frustrating as a player. Luckily, I watched his video like the day before I assembled this board, so that did save me some initial frustration. Anyway, that is why the Strymon Blue Sky is up here and not right down next to the Sur Eclipse. Because what would happen if these two pedals were right next to each other is I would be accidentally turning on the Strymon Blue Sky when I was going for you know an overdrive on the Sur Eclipse and vice versa. These two foot switches would just be way too close together if the Strymon Blue Sky was down here. So that is why I've left this space open here and that's why I'm not going to put any more pedals on this board. And if you look here, that's also why the foot switch on the Bonsai is actually in the middle of these two switches on the MD500. So I use this pedal as a boost. So I strategically placed that foot switch so that it would be in between these two switches so that when I go to slam on a boost for a solo, 
I don't accidentally turn on a chorus or a phaser or a tremolo or anything like that. The crybaby is all the way down here so that I don't accidentally turn on, you know, another modulation effect from the MD500 when my foot is all the way down on the watt. And that is also why I'm not going to fill this space with another pedal. Even though the space is there, that doesn't mean it's a good idea to fill it with another pedal because if I did that, I would undoubtedly, you know, turn on another pedal when my foot was all the way down on the watt. So I'm not going to add any more pedals to this board for those reasons. And the compressor is actually the last pedal in my chain. So it needs to be on the side of the board so that I can easily plug in a jack pedal. Because if I had it here, there wouldn't be any space for that, obviously. So regardless of the type of pedal that you have last in your chain, you'll want to place it somewhere on the side of the board so that you can just easily plug in and go straight into your amp. Unless your board has some sort of patch bay on it, of course. Now, I have to say a massive thank you to the team at Barefoot Buttons for sending me their products to use on this board. These acrylic and silver buttons that you can see on most of the pedals on this board, they make it easier to turn on your pedals when you're playing at home and you don't have shoes on, you're just in your socks or you're barefoot. But that's actually not why I was interested in their products initially. It was because I had a problem with this Boss MD500 pedal. The foot switches on this pedal are so far apart and they're angled downwards. I don't know why Boss designed the pedal this way, but that's the way it is. And that has meant that I've not been able to use the bank up and down features that you get on this pedal by activating two switches at the same time. I couldn't do that unless I used my hands, which is frustrating because it's a pedal, you want to be able to use it with your feet. So I had thought about placing something underneath the pedal to elevate it slightly, thought maybe that would solve the problem, but then I remembered that I had seen this company called Barefoot Buttons on Instagram before, and I thought, well, if I could get some of those big buttons and place them on the foot switches, then that would close the gap between the switches and make it easier for me to actually activate the bank up and bank down features on the pedal. So I reached out to them, I was dealing with a guy called Brett who very kindly sent me a bunch of buttons to use on this board and I actually used the board with the buttons on it for the first time last night and it completely solved the problem that I was having with the Boss MD500. So now I can easily use the bank up and bank down features with my feet, not my hands. So yeah, problem solved. Once again, thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate the help. I'll put a link to the Barefoot Buttons website in the description below. Go and check them out. If you're building a pedal board currently, I highly recommend adding their products to your board. So let's talk signal chain. What order do I have my pedals in? Well, we start going from the guitar into the Ernie Ball volume pedal down here. And then I use the tuner out from this pedal to go to the Boss TU3 chromatic tuner. So the TU3, as you can see, it's always on. So I never turn that pedal off. So it's never actually muting the signal when it's on, which is what it would do if you just had it in the chain with two patch cables going to another pedal. But I can still tune silently by turning down the Ernie Ball volume pedal. So there's no problems there. And then coming out from the output of the volume pedal, we go into the Dunlop Crybaby Mini, then to the Sur Eclipse Dual Overdrive Distortion, then into the JHS Bonsai, which is a Tube Screamer pedal that I use as a boost. Then from the Bonsai, we go into the Walrus Audio ARP 87 Delay. Really nice delay pedal, one of my favorite things on this board. Then we go into the Boss MD500, which I use for things like chorus and tremolo and rotary sounds. Then, coming from this blue pedal, we go into another blue pedal, the Strymon Blue Sky, which I use for two different types of reverb. And then last in the chain, we have the Fender, the Benz compressor. So that's my signal chain. And the reason that the pedals are in this particular order is honestly just because that's what sounded good to me when I was experimenting before I actually put the board together. I got a bunch of cheap patch cables and just experimented by placing different pedals in different places in the chain. And this is the end result. Now let's talk sounds. The compressor at the end of the chain, that is always turned on. I never turn the compressor off on a gig. 
typically anyway, at least when I'm using a telly or a strap, it's always on. And it just ensures that my quiet parts are brought up in the mix so that if I want to play, you know, nice and dynamically, I can still do that I can, and I can still be heard at the same time. So that's why the compressor is always on. So that's my sort of dry, clean sound with the compressor on. Now let's talk reverb. I'm using the Strymon Blue Sky and on the right side I have it set as a sort of medium plate. So that's quite a subtle reverb, it's not over the top, but then on the left side, using the favorite switch, I have a really long, sort of more ambient sounding reverb. Next, let's talk overdrive. So I'm using the Sur Eclipse, which is a dual overdrive and distortion pedal, two identical circuits, on the blue channel, I have it set as a sort of low to mid gain overdrive. That's my overdrive sound. Then on the right side, on the red channel, as you can probably see, I've got a bit more gain dialed in here, so it's acting more as a sort of distortion. <laughs> Then right above the Sur Eclipse, we have the JHS Bonsai, which is a Tube Screamer style pedal. And I use this as a solo boost. So as you can see, I've got the volume quite high and a little bit of drive added on the Bonsai as well, just for a bit of extra juice when going for a solo. So here's the Sur Eclipse red channel once again. With the Bonsai. As for delay sounds, you guys know I like to play country, so I typically have my ARP 87 set up using the slapback setting, which sounds like this. Turn off the reverb so you can hear it a bit clearer. As for modulation, I like to use a bit of chorus now and then. And I really like tremolo, so I will often add that in to certain songs. And I'm sure you guys know what a wah pedal sounds like, but just in case you don't. Okay, so there you have it. That's my pedal board. I'm really enjoying playing with this thing at the minute at gigs. It's been uh, it's been really fun to use an actual pedal board for a change. And I don't think I'm gonna make any changes in the near future. I don't feel like adding a pedal switcher or anything like that to the board because for the types of gigs I do at the minute, I'm not actually doing that much tap dancing on the board. So I don't really feel the need to add a switching system right now, but maybe who knows in the future, that might happen. But anyway, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching this little video about my new pedal board. 
And if you did, please smash that like button below, share it with your friends, and click subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.